Hiya! Welcome back to another episode of Believe It or Not. Take a look at where I am. This is terrific wildlife habitat. What, you might say, in a parking lot? Are you kidding? Well, stay tuned and we'll talk more in this episode about habitat. Well, Jeepers, Georgia, let's talk a little bit about that word habitat and what it means. Of course, it includes probably what food and water. Yeah, and, and animals need, you know, shelter from oh. weather and from predators if you're, if you're a small animal. Yeah, and did you know that wildlife meet all of their needs from different kinds of habitats? Say, Georgia, did you know that across the Great Lakes states, there's almost 600 different species of just vertebrate wildlife? Wow, that's a lot. But, it is. But wait, what is a vertebrate? Oh, good question. Well, it's anything with a backbone, a spinal column, if you will, and that could be mammals and fish and birds and amphibians. Or reptiles? Yeah. Yeah, and then there's all the invertebrates, too. You know, things like insects and slugs and spiders and black flies and ticks. Really cool invertebrates. Gross. Gross? Really? Let's get back to that other thing. You were talking about how parking lots make great habitat. What are you talking oh, about? We should answer that question, shouldn't we? Okay. Okay. Well, if you're a ring-billed gull, this is great habitat if you're looking for leftover burgers and french fries on the parking lot. Or if you're migrating north or south, this is a super duper place to hang out safe from predators. Gulls are, gulls are really cool. Really? Really, gulls. Oh, what the heck? Oh. Barry, with a little bit of fish overtone. So this is pretty different from a parking lot. Yeah, you, you may have noticed that there are things growing here, grasses and, and other plants. And you can reach the soil a lot easier here than you can in a parking lot with all that pavement. Yeah, that's true. And, and even in the winter, maybe even especially in the winter, underneath some of these snowed over plants, there's a whole ecology down here called subnivian ecology. And it consists of small mammals like mice and voles and, and maybe some moles. Wait, voles with a V? Yeah, with a, with a V. You may not have heard about them before. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about when we're talking about forest habitat. You could say there are forests, and then there are forests. Wait a minute. Can you explain that a little bit, Georgia? Sure. The landscape has many sets of habitat conditions, from open meadows to deep woodlands. There are also wetlands, ponds, vernal pools, lakes, and many other habitat types. In a forest, the size of trees and the number of trees matter. The species of trees will make a difference, along with the presence or the absence of shrubs and young trees. Now, older trees with holes and cavities are good for small mammals and many species of birds. We call these standing dead trees snags and they are valuable pieces in the habitat puzzle. And after the big trees eventually fall over, they provide shelter for animals that live on the ground, such as salamanders and small mammals, or drumming logs for roughed grouse. And of course, forests never stay the same, right? Nope. They're constantly changing over time. And this is a really important concept that foresters and biologists call succession. Succession is a predictable change in the forest over time. A piece of bare ground will soon be growing grasses and weeds, then shrubs and small trees, then a middle-aged forest, then eventually an old forest. There is an aspen forest right behind me on my left, and it's thousands of little trees per acre. And that's great habitat for things like woodcock and golden-winged warblers. 
Yeah, lots of animals and, and birds and other things. And, and as the aspen grows up, like you see over on this side, the trees are bigger, there's fewer of them per acre, and other animals will live here, like certain hawks and maybe an oven bird or two might oh, wow. occupy this site. Now, any one animal may need different forest types. And so having those different types of forests spread across the landscape will really help to accommodate lots of different species. Ruffed grouse is a great example. So male ruffed grouse you may hear out in the woods doing their drumming to attract mates. Oh, where are the ladies? Now habitat isn't the only thing that can limit the number of species that can be in an area. See these holes? These are made by pileated woodpeckers. And so this is great habitat for pileated woodpeckers, but but only so many of them will be here because they're territorial, Georgia, which means they don't play well with others. So even though there might be lots of great trees for more pileated woodpeckers, the ones that, will hear, that are here will kick out the ones that try to invade. Now the lack of food sources in the winter means that every species has to do one of three things in order to survive. Yeah, they can just tough it out like deer or bobcats. Yeah, or they can migrate like geese or monarch mm. butterflies or hummingbirds. Yeah, they go a long way. They, they can, wow. yeah. Or they just take a long nap like chipmunks hibernate or frogs and toads actually just freeze with the weather. It's amazing all the ways in which animals drive their needs from different habitats over time in different seasons almost too many ways to even count. It's really incredible stuff, and lots of people get really into the idea of learning about all these different kinds of habitats and animals. Sure, and you can do that in, a, in, a, in any forest or next to a pond or a marsh or backyard or a schoolyard too, for that matter. Or even a parking lot. Yeah, yeah even a parking lot, very <laughs> good. So there's a lot of good stories to tell about forests, so join us for more of them in the next episode of Believe, Believe it, it or, or not. not.